Boleh dengar tak? Dengar tak ke? Okey. Okay, so uh, today uh, we will enter a new topic uh, on a stress and uh, strain relationship. Okay, so uh, maybe uh, all of you are already quite familiar with the concept of uh, uh, stress and strain, right? Okay, maybe all of you are already quite uh, familiar with the concept of uh, uh, stress and strain. Okay, okay. If you ever perform uh, mechanical testing, uh, this is the type of graph. Okay, this is the type of graph uh, that uh, we will obtain. Uh, on vertical axis, we have a, a stress, and here we have a stress on vertical axis, and on a, on a horizontal axis, we have a strain. And other than uh, stress and strain uh, relationship, uh, we also have a load displacement like what we can see in the figure here, uh, we have a load on a vertical axis and uh, we have a displacement on a horizontal axis. And <clears throat> at least both for stress and strain and uh, load and displacement, uh, we can obtain it by uh, performing a mechanical testing uh, of a material. Okay, so when uh, when designing structures such as bridges, uh, engineers carefully choose the materials by uh, taking into consideration the forces, uh, the materials or the structural component are expected to experience uh, during their lifetime. And uh, usually uh, ductile materials such as steel, uh, aluminum and other metals are used for uh, components that are experienced uh, tensile loading. And uh, brittle materials such as concrete, uh, ceramic and glass are used for a component uh, that uh, experience uh, uh, compressive uh, loading. So strength of a material can only be determined by uh, experiment and examples of a test used by engineers or research scientists are the tension testing and the compression uh, testing. So in, in engineering, the term strength is uh, always defined and is uh, probably one of the following. Uh, maybe we can have a compressive strength or uh, mampatan in Malay, or we can have a tensile strength uh, or tegangan or we can have a shear strength, richihan, and all these, all these uh, types of uh, strength uh, depend on the type of uh, loading that uh, we apply to the material. <clears throat> so materials, uh, when in service, uh, they are subjected to uh, forces and loading, and the relationship between the deformation uh, of the material to an applied uh, loading reflect the mechanical uh, properties uh, of the material. For example, uh, we can see here, we have an aluminum alloy of the airplane uh, wing, and the wing loading that are experienced by the uh, airplane wing equals to the total weight of the aircraft uh, divided by the area uh, of the wing. Uh, so it is important to know the characteristic of the material and uh, carefully design the end product so that uh, the deformation will not be uh, excessive and a fracture will not uh, happen. Okay, so we, here we have a, a figure, then from here we can see that how the mechanical testing uh, of an airplane uh, wing uh, is conducted. Here you will see uh, the wings of a Boeing uh, 777 that uh, undergo uh, a test that, that have uh, several names, uh, including the wing up, bend, wing up bending testing and uh, static testing. And here the process is quite simple. Uh, we just drag the wing up until they, they snap. Until they snap until they broke uh, in order to find out exactly how much uh, uh, flexible they are. So mechanical properties uh, can uh, be accessed or determined uh, by uh, performing a lab experiment uh, that uh, mimic or replicate uh, the service condition. And there are a few factors uh, that need to be considered, uh, such as the nature of the applied loading, uh, the duration, and also environmental conditions such as uh, uh, temperature uh, and uh, humidity. So uh, measuring and uh, understanding uh, the mechanical response is uh, very important uh, for uh, material research, uh, product development and also uh, process control. And the mechanical response of uh, this material uh, is dependent on the application 
scenario as well as a material a chemistry. And uh, mechanical properties can be accessed or uh, determined by performing the lab experiment uh, that uh, will mimic or replicate uh, the uh, service condition. So uh, mechanical properties are very important. Uh, they are penting uh, to various parties, uh, such as a uh, uh, producer, consumer, a government agency, and a research organization. Uh, maybe for a producer or industry, they are more concerned about uh, the mechanical property uh, related to the quality control. And uh, for a government agency and a research organization, uh, maybe they focus more on the scientific uh, purpose. And there should be a consistency in how the test uh, should be conducted. And also in terms of the interpretation uh, of the result and uh, the establishment and publication of this uh, standard are uh, coordinated by a uh, professional society such as a uh, uh, STM. You all know the company STM. So STM is American uh, Society of uh, Testing Material. And also we have a GIS or Japanese standard. And we have a BS uh, that refer to British standard. And we also have a Malaysian standard and GB that uh, refers to uh, Chinese national standard that are issued by uh, Standardization uh, Administration of uh, China or SSE. <clears throat> so one of the basic uh, ingredients, uh, if you want to study the mechanical of a material, uh, is the resistive uh, property of material. And uh, this uh, property can relate the stress to the strain and can we can only achieve it by uh, performing an experiment. So like uh, what we can see in the figure here. So if a load is static or changes slowly with time and applied uniformly over a cross section or surface of a member, then we can access the mechanical behavior. We can access the mechanical behavior by performing a simple uh, stress uh, strain testing. And uh, one of the simplest uh, testing, if you want to determine the mechanical property, uh, is tensile testing. Okay, we have a tensile testing. Uh, here we have a universal uh, testing machine. A universal testing machine uh, include all the electromechanical and uh, hydraulic system to perform a static testing, such as a tensile a compression, a bending, peel, a tear, and other mechanical testing. So here we can. Okay, in, uh, in this uh, testing, for tensile testing, the specimen is uh, elongated by uh, a moving cross head. Uh, we have a load cell here. We have a load cell uh, that acts as a transducer which converts a value of a force into a proportional uh, electrical signal. <clears throat> then uh, we have a extensometer that uh, measures the extension uh, of the specimen. Uh, extensometer uh, untuk uh, mengukur kepanjangan sample uh, during the uh, testing and also we have a uh, and the machine will stretch the specimen uh, at a low constant rate until a breaking point and at a frequent interval during the testing uh, data is recorded for, of the applied uh, loading and all the data will be uh, processed by uh, a computer okay so kita the machine ni di connect dengan computer kita we perform the testing and the data will be analyzed by a software So here we have uh, different types of holder for different uh, types of a specimen uh, for a tensile uh, testing. Uh, kalau kita tengok dekat gambar ni, kita ada macam-macam bentuk lah a specimen holder for a different uh, types of a uh, uh, sample. And here we have a, a failed specimen of a CFRP. We have a CFRP failed specimen here. Okay, CFRP uh, means a carbon fiber reinforced polymer. Uh, we can see the specimen uh, fail uh, under tension here. So engineers uh, will, uh, so engineers determine the loading or external forces uh, that act on the structure. So when we apply uh, external forces uh, to a structure, the internal stress or internal forces will develop uh, within the material uh, to resist the outside forces. And the opposition of uh, external and uh, internal forces is what uh, hold the uh, structure together. So uh, one, once engineer know how, 
the loading that I constructed, they will calculate the resulting uh, internal stress and design uh, each piece of the structure so that it will be strong enough uh, to carry a loading without a breaking. And there are five uh, types of loading uh, that act on the structure. First, we have a tension, uh, ataupun tegangan. Then we have a compression, or mampatan. We have a shear. In Malay, we call it a richihan, and we also have a torsion. And one more types of loading is a uh, bending. Eh? So we have a tension, a compression, shear, torsion, and a bending. So this is bending or lenturan. So uh, like what we can see here, uh, when when a moment or turning force. The turning force is M or moment F times D. F is force uh, times uh, kita kali dengan distance. So, for example, kita ada uh, rak buku kat sini. So, when a moment or turning force is applied to a structural member uh, that is fixed on both ends, uh, such as a book, rak buku, so a moment that causes a bending is called a bending moment. And the bending will produce a tension uh, and a compression uh, inside a beam or a pole uh, that causes it to smile. That's what you can see in the figure here. And the molecule at the top here, molecule at the top, uh, of the smile will get squeezed together, they can tekan, they makin dekat. So we squeeze the molecule together, uh, while the molecules at the bottom here uh, of the smile will get a stretch out. So a beam or pole in bending will fail in tension, a uh, break on the side that is being pulled apart. Uh, for example, a shelf in a bookcase and the earlier the diving uh, uh, bought a scenario, macam uh, papan anjal ataupun uh, buku. Okay, so dekat atas ni, Dekat atas ni, it will uh, experience uh, compression. Dekat bawah ni, the molecule will uh, experience uh, tension. So it is good to know that uh, every time uh, we apply uh, loading to a material, the resistance will oppose this deformation. It's built up within the material. And this will obey the Newton third law. Okay, you hukum Newton ketiga ya. That mentioned that for uh, every action, uh, there is an uh, equal and uh, opposite reaction. Uh, for example, uh, we apply uh, compressive loading to this uh, concrete block. When we apply compressive loading, then the compressive uh, stress will develop uh, within the material. And uh, if we apply tensile loading uh, for a woody specimen, we apply a tensile loading, we pull it apart, then of course, the tensile uh, stress will also develop uh, within the material. So this uh, obey the Newton uh, third law that mentioned that for uh, every action, there is an uh, equal and uh, opposite reaction. So this is how we perform the tension or compression testing. Uh, if you want to determine the elongation, uh, we can use either a caliper or extensometer to calculate the normal uh, strain uh, in the specimen. And this, sometimes the strength can also be read uh, directly using an uh, electrical uh, strength gauge. Okay, uh, the purpose of this uh, strength gauge is we want to uh, measure the uh, strength or change in length uh, in this specimen. Uh, we can use an extensometer or we can uh, use a strength gauge that we stick on the uh, specimen uh, during the testing. So this is the example of a uh, application of a strain gauge uh, during the bending testing. Uh, we stick the strain gauge on the specimen to determine the uh, change in length of the sample. Okay, strain gauge, uh, ataupun in Malay, we call it as a toll of terikan. Eh? Strain gauge or toll of terikan. And here we have uh, the standard tensile uh, specimen with a circular cross section. Uh, ini yang kita panggil uh, circular cross section ataupun uh, dog bone shape. So uh, tensile specimen is a usually a standardized a sample a cross section. It has a two shoulder. It has a two shoulder uh, and a gauge. Kat tengah-tengah ni kita panggil gauge. And the shoulder is uh, large so they can uh, be gripped. Dekat shoulder ni, it will be gripped to the jig of the tensile machine. Uh, whereas the uh, gauge section has a smaller uh, cross section compared to gauge, compared to uh, shoulder. 
so that a deformation uh, and failure can occur uh, in this area. So when we perform a tensile testing, uh, the failure will uh, happen here in the reduced section of uh, the specimen. And here we have a, a compressive testing that shows, uh, and the purpose of uh, compressive testing is uh, to show how the material will react uh, when it is being compressed. And compress compression testing uh, enables us to determine the material behavior or response under crushing loading and to measure the plastic flow uh, behavior and a tactile fracture uh, limits of a material. Okay. Okay. And this one is a uh, compressive testing. Eh? This one is compressive testing. This one is not. This one is a flexural testing. Okay, now we will uh, discuss a bit about the concept of uh, stress and strain. So uh, stress and strain are two fundamental concepts uh, of a mechanic of material. Uh, and the relationship between uh, stress and strain uh, define the mechanical property of material. And it is very important uh, when we want to design uh, something. And it's, it is a very fundamental concept that uh, we use to uh, describe uh, how a body will respond uh, to external loading. So uh, in our lecture, we will uh, use a prismatic bar. We use a prismatic bar uh, to illustrate the uh, fundamental concept of uh, stress and uh, strain. I will show you later. Okay. So uh, what is uh, stress? This is some uh, definition in Malay. So dalam aspek kejutaan, uh, stress dalam bentuk tekanan dan tegangan uh, ada persamaan dengan tekanan perasaan. So bila seseorang itu mental yang terlalu tinggi boleh mengakibatkan gila. Ataupun ketegangan yang terlalu tinggi yang diberikan uh, in dalam dari segi perspektif material bila kita apply ketegangan yang terlalu tinggi uh, terhadap sutas tali atau kain akan menyebabkan uh, tali tersebut putus ataupun koyak. So begitu juga bila spesimen wajian tegangan akan putus apabila daya yang dikenakan terlalu tinggi. So dalam uh, konsep kejuruteraan, uh, kita jarang sekali pakai istilah uh, ketegangan. Uh, sebaliknya kita uh, menggunakan istilah tegasan. So tegasan yang lebih hat akan uh, mengakibatkan kegagalan pada uh, sesuatu komponen. Ya. So here is the uh, definition of uh, stress. So in the mechanic and uh, material science, uh, stress as uh, represented by uh, this uh, Greek alphabet, sigma, is a physical uh, quantity that expresses the internal forces uh, that the, the neighboring particle uh, of a continuous material apply uh, on uh, each other. So if uh, we apply <coughs> external loading to a body, it will uh, experience deformation. And within the body, resistance that oppose uh, this deformation is built up, like what I have uh, mentioned before. And uh, for a direct compressive or tensile loading, uh, the stress is designated sigma and defined by a uh, force divided by the original area. And the unit of a stress are megapascal or gigapascal. And one megapascal equals to 145 uh, psi or pound square inch. Uh, here we have uh, some uh, concept of uh, stress or analogy. Kita ada sedikit uh, figure yang menunjukkan konsep tegasan. Uh, contoh, kita ada balon, uh, dinding balon bila kita pump dengan angin, dia akan mengalami ketegangan atau tegasan dan akhirnya akan pecah. Then uh, we have uh, joran, pancing. Uh, joran juga akan patah akibat lenturan yang terlampau tinggi. Then we have a titi here, jembatan. Uh, titi juga akan patah akibat tegasan uh, lenturan yang terlampau tinggi. So the stress that are acting are perpendicular uh, to the cut surface, uh, it is referred to as a normal stress. And the equation uh, sigma equals to P divided by A will give the average uh, normal uh, stress. So apa maksud uh, normal stress ni? Uh, normal stress means that the stress that occur when a member is loaded by an uh, axial forces. And uh, normal tension, on the other hand, uh, occurred when a member is placed 
intention or compression and the prismatic bar like what we have here it could be a uh, bridge trust it or it could be a connecting road or even a column uh, in building So here we have a definition of uh, stress. We can define stress as a force per unit area. Force, here we have a force here, per unit area over which the force is acting. Ataupun dalam bahasa Melayunya, keamatan, daya yang terbagi pada sesuatu keratan atau uh, bahagian. So the sign convention for normal uh, stress is positive. Uh, when we uh, for a tensile stress and a negative uh, for uncompressive uh, stress and because a normal stress sigma is uh, obtained uh, by dividing the axial force uh, by the cross sectional area so it has a units of a force per unit area like uh, this is like what i have uh, mentioned before so uh, you remember this design convention for a normal stress positive when we apply tensile, means that we pull the specimen apart. And negative when we apply compressive uh, testing. specimen, right? So like what we can see here, the figure here, uh, continuously distributed stress acting over entire cross-section and the axial force F uh, acting at the cross-section is the resultant of a dose uh, stress. So uh, in general, uh, the stress acting on a plane, here we have a plane, uh, maybe uniform or maybe a uh, very in uh, intensity, but uh, for simplicity, we just assume that uh, the stress here, uh, that act on the cross section here, are uh, uniformly distributed. Yes, Raga, kita assume the force that we apply on that plane are uniformly distributed over the area. So remember that uh, the stress, uh, it is the quantity that describes uh, this, the distribution of uh, internal forces uh, within a body. So here is uh, the unit of uh, stress. In uh, SI unit, uh, we express force in Newton and area in square meter. So we have a Newton over a meter squared, also equivalent to Pascal. And in a US unit, we uh, Stress is customarily expressed in pound, in pound uh, per square inch, pound over square inch is, or kips per square inch KSI, KSI, KSI is kips per uh, square inch. So seven thousand Pascal equals to one uh, psi. Okay, we have uh, talked about. Stress. Now we will uh, discuss a bit about uh, strain or trikan. So material that uh, subjected to external forces uh, will be deformed. Uh, when we apply loading to a body or to a material, uh, it will uh, change in shape, right? If we apply tekanan pada sesuatu material, bentuk dia akan berubah. So examples of deformation could be uh, shortening, pemendekan, elongation or twisting and an actually loaded bar that undergoes a change in length uh, becoming longer when in tension uh, when we apply tension for example to this uh, prismatic bar uh, it will become longer and when we apply compression it will uh, become shorter so how do we define uh, strain how do we define strain so we can uh, define a uh, strain as this is the symbol of uh, strain we call it this is a uh, great letter epsilon so how can we define strain? We can define strain as a change in length uh, divided by uh, original length. So kita tengok dekat a finger ni. Uh, when we apply, for example, we apply a tension loading, then it will this the prismatic bar will become elongated, and the change in length ataupun pemanjangan delta. This is the change in length we divide by the original length uh, of the material, L. So 
So here is another example uh, of a stress and strain, the tensile loading at, at the bottom end of the bar, like what we can see here. And at the top of the bar, uh, forces that representing the action of the removed part of the bar and the intensity force, that is the force per unit area, is what we call as a stress equals to E divided by A. Okay, any point summer, which um, I what I already explained before. And the intensity, uh, the intensity of, of a distortion, degree of distortion is what we call as a strain. And uh, uh, deformation is called uh, elastic deformation. And uh, if uh, if the stress is linear uh, function of a strain, like um, kita the graph, uh, this is a, uh, if the stress is linear function to the strain, Okay, here we have a strain and here we have a stress. If the graph is uh, linear, we can say this follow a Hooke's law. Okay, if the graph is linear, then we can say that it follow the Hooke's law. We will discuss more about a uh, Hooke's law uh, later. Okay, so remember this before we end our class. Uh, if the bar is in tension, uh, the strain is called a tensile strain. And if the bar is in compression, the strain is called a compressive uh, strain. And the tensile strain is uh, taken as a positive, and the compressive uh, strain uh, as a negative. And the strain epsilon is called a normal strain because it is uh, associated with the with a normal uh, stresses. And because normal strain epsilon is the ratio uh, of the two length, uh, it is a dimensionless uh, quantity meaning that uh, it has a no a unit. Okay, uh, before we end our class, uh, we have uh, one problem here. Uh, maybe you can try it. Uh, consider a steel bar having a length of a two millimeter, a two meter. So uh, when loaded in tension, uh, the bar might elongate by the amount delta equal to 1.4 millimeter. So now I want you to calculate the strain. Okay, cuba buat boleh tak? Boleh buat tak ni? Cuba you all try. Okay, kita guna formula epsilon or strain uh, change in length divided by the original length. Okay, siapa dapat? Siapa dapat jawapan ni? Siapa dapat? Okay, jawapan dia 7 darab 10 kuasa negatif 4 sebab dia strain so no unit. Okay, semua dapat dah? Semua boleh kira? Okay, semua boleh buat dah yang ni? Boleh. Boleh, senang je kan? Okay, so that is uh, the end of our class today. Ada ada persoalan ke nak tanya? Ada apa-apa yang tak faham ke? Okay, uh, Nur Syamimi Rafi, uh, ada nak tanya? Syamimi? Ada. Tak ada. Faham ya? Okay, nota, uh, saya punya kelas ni saya dah rakam. Nanti saya akan share juga lah uh, rakaman kita hari ni. Okay, yang lain ada, ada nak tanya soalan? Anyone? Uh, if you want to ask question? Abdul Malik? Hmm, tak ada, Doktor. Tak ada. Faham ya? Hmm. 
Okay Ana, Anastasia ada macam ada nak tanya soalan je? Tak ada Doktor. Tak ada. Okay. Okay kalau macam tu that, that's all for today. Uh, kita jumpa hari Kamis eh? Kamis ke Jumat? Jumaat. Ah Jumaat. Okay thank you eh. Thank you Doktor. Okay thank you. Thank you Doktor. Nanti saya akan share rakaman kelas kita hari ni eh.